Good morning, everybody. We have a lot to accomplish this morning. We have a, a couple grates that cracked up and broke on the outdoor furnace uh, this past week, and we just got the new ones in. We got to get those fixed. Uh, we got to go check the traps. I'm actually uh, going to launch the drone here in a second and go take a look at all of them quick, see if we got any critters. Uh, those dirt hole sets. I'm really excited about with those coyotes being up there. Uh, I can't see them from the house. There's woods but you know in between me and where those sets are. They're actually right behind that patch of woods right there. But uh, I got two beaver sets out that we need to check. Uh, it'll be super easy. I'll launch the drone up, go check them out. Uh, I have contacted the Department of Conservation about checking traps on your own property with a drone. Totally legal, nothing wrong with that. So uh, I know that I'll probably get some questions on that because I do every year when I check traps with a drone. Uh, it's super beneficial to be able to do that, especially with those uh, predator sets. You know, I, I can check those sets, get right on them and look without putting any human scent or having any activity around those sets, which is really, really important, especially I think for, for uh, coyotes. Those are some wily buggers, I'll tell you what. But... Uh, what else is I going to show you? I want to show you this cool shed mounting kit I just got off Amazon. Uh, it's certainly not the cheapest thing, uh, the cheapest way to go about it, but it is a really cool idea. And I want to show you guys that I think we got everything under control. And if I have a little extra time before I need to get to work, I'm going to go set another dirt hole where I've been getting a bunch of pictures of a coyote crossing on this path. So. Lots to do, let's send the drone up in the air and see what we got. Okay, so I just flew the drone home. We have a catch on a dirt hole set. That set was only out for a day and we nailed the red fox. When I uh, was flying the drone up over and I seen the catch circle, I'm like, oh my gosh, I smoked the coyote in one night. And uh, no, it was just a red fox, but it looked like a really pretty red fox. And it looked like one of the beaver sets was sprung. It didn't look like there was anything in the trap. So we're gonna go make our our rounds, we gotta take care of that beaver, we gotta reset that trap, 
and we got some fur to take care of. So, pretty exciting. I didn't take long for that set to connect. One day, wham, we got something. I might set a few more sets uh, if I have the time. We'll see. Let's go check. Let's go get that red fox and take care of that beaver set. What a pretty, pretty little red fox that is. You're okay. It's a male. Doesn't look like it's been here that long, really. Holy fox tracks. There are fox tracks everywhere. Look at all these things. Can't believe how many fox tracks are around here. There must have been multiple. I mean, there's fox tracks everywhere. This little bugger must have just ran around this thing till it got caught. It is a pretty one though, man. Got a good deep catch on him. It is way in there. He's a little cold. One thing I wanted to show you guys is how deep that catch is. Look at that paw, that thing is, I mean, as deep as it catches, you're gonna find, which is exactly what you want. It's absolutely perfect. We'll go ahead and get this boy taken care of and get the trap reset. Now it smells, it's gonna be a really prime set now. It smells really foxy. It looks like there was other fox that were all over it last night too. Just circling them, you can see where it looks to me like a fox was just sitting right here and right there. So we'll get him taken care of and get it reset.
Okay, so we got the reset all made. This has got a ton of uh, eye appeal now. And I'm gonna go spice, uh, spice that other set up now. I got some fresh uh, fox crap. All the crap that I could find, I stuck right in that uh, mound to add to the, to the scent. Normally, I'd wanna use a different bait because obviously the bait that I had in there is, you know, all just smells like that now, but I didn't have any with me, so we use the same bait, but this got a ton of eye appeal, and uh, there's obviously more critters around here, so we'll see how we do. I wanna go up and look at this other trap up here and stick this uh, turd on it. We're over at this other set now. We're gonna stick this uh, fox turd right on here so we can add to our appeal. And stick it right, right in there. I don't see any tracks around here really. Well, yeah I do. That's a fox track right there. Yeah, we had a fox run right by that set last night. Huh. That's surprising. I missed, I wonder if it checked the trap out or not. That trail camera should tell us a story. Oh, it came right through here. Right through there. Right through there and then right up through there. Well, let's go check on that beaver set. Okay, we're coming up to check these beaver traps out. I know the one was still set and fine, but the other one looks set off to me. And I'd imagine there's another beaver in here, two, two year olds I would think, but see very well. Could have been a muskrat that set this thing off. Yep, it's set off and there's nothing in it. Go ahead and get it reset here. I'll tell you, these 330s are always a battle. I bought a pair of setters a few years ago and left them on top of a beaver hut uh, when I was scoping things out. And uh, I went back to get it in the spring and it was gone. Okay, let's get this thing set. We got it. <sighs> was it without a battle?
Okay, number two. Here we go. Just gotta grind your teeth and let her have it. Whew. I do know these muck boots are really upsetting me. I'll never buy another pair of muck boots again. My feet are soaked. I always thought, you know, it'd be you'd be better off spending extra money and getting good quality boots. And I think it used to be the case, but now muck boots suck. They don't even last me a year. You'd be better off buying cheap boots and just knowing you're gonna buy another pair in a year than buying expensive muck boots and having them turn into these and having cold feet. It's really annoying. Really annoying. Okay, we're set. I think I think there's another beaver in here and once we catch that one, we'll have them pretty well wiped out. I don't think there's a whole family in here looking at the feed pile over there. Talk about some, some cold feet. My feet are soaked. Boots suck. Well, I let this go out. Uh, last time I put wood in it was yesterday morning, and uh, it should be totally gone. Sure is. Still pretty warm in there, actually, but you can see the uh, grates on the left side. These two front ones are totally totally uh busted up and my theory is uh the reason they do that is from the ashes getting up to the top and then uh you know it just getting hot and uh cold and then hot and cold and hot and cold you know fluctuating temperatures all the time is really hard on those on that steel so over two or three years you always have some grates that start breaking and cracking up and uh, I think that's the case. I think a way to prevent that is to uh, keep the ashes cleaned out as much as you possibly can. I think the uh, more you get those ashes cleaned out, the better off those grates are. But no matter what, you're always going to have, uh, you know, those grates having issues every every three or four years. So we got the new ones. We're going to have to clean this out. Stick the new ones in there and we'll be fired back up and keep the old lady warm at night because when she's cold <laughs> she's she's not very pleasant.
See how that breaks? It just gets so hot, they just start cracking and snapping off. Still got some pretty hot coals in there. Believe it or not. Whoo! We still got hot, hot, hot. Let me go get some leather gloves, some insulated leather gloves. Okay, we got some insulated leather gloves now after toasting my fingers there's the other grate right there Gonna touch that. See how those old grates, they just uh, start cracking up and eventually break. It's tough because all this carbon builds up right there along the edge. It's like rock hard. You have to chisel it out of there, but I think we got it pretty well cleaned up. Uh, so we can put those two new grates in there. We'll go grab them and get them installed.
gotta do some more chipping. I gotta get a screwdriver, or Philip said. I think we're in business. Okay, the new grates are in place. Had to do a lot of chipping from that carbon that's right there on the edge, but we got it in now and we'll be ready to heat back up. Stuff should catch and take right off. Be all she takes right there. She'll fire right up now. We're gonna go ahead and wrap this video up. I didn't end up getting uh, another coyote set out today, but I plan to uh, hopefully soon. Uh, th this is the uh, shed mounting system that I was gonna show you guys on this video, but I'm actually gonna show you on the next video. It's the RH2 rack hub. It's uh, actually pretty sweet, so. I'll show you this on the next video and I'll set a few sheds up on it. Actually the Bully 8, I'm going to uh, set him up for this for my dad. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the, uh, the fox catch and I'll see you on the next video. Take it easy everybody.